Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Digital Flash Fire. I am RT Rolling Thunder, and we are looking at Dark Souls 3. It is real. It is happening. I am so excited. Um, we're going to go into new game. I did start up a test guy just to benchmark and make sure everything ran properly, um, but I just did that for frameworks. So, without further ado. Yes, indeed. I'm going to try not to talk. I'm going to try my best. It is called Lothric. Lothric. Right on. Where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. Oh, I'm so excited. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Oh, talk about an atmosphere. little hermit guy oh no it's okay he's just sleeping he's just taking a little rest it's gonna be okay I'm sorry I'm, I'm I'm gonna say dumb stuff because I'm very excited and I'm really sorry about that but when the link of fire is threatened the bell yes. tolls yes Aldrich, Saint of the Deep. What is that? Oh. Saren's undead legion, the Abyss Watchers. Right on. Now it's important for us to get familiar with all this because all of these games give the big the, the big picture in the opening cinematic. Oh, whoa! Yorm the Giant. He is just a legit badass. Oh man. I am I'm like I'm near shaking right now. Only in truth. The lords will abandon their thrones. Ooh. Look at that. And the unkindled will rise. It's just so beautiful. So beautiful. Nameless, accursed, undead. Unfit even to be cinder. There's our bonfire. That's interesting. I wonder if that's I wonder if that's me or a descendant of me or or another boss maybe, another character. Um wow. Okay, awesome. Here we go. Uh this is going to be pretty run of the mill RT. That's me. Male, yes, young, mature, aged. I I guess we'll do young. Um so there's there's something I want to lay out really early on. I'm not going to try to speed run. I'm not going to try to just kick through it and see all the content that I can. I want to enjoy this, learn about this stuff, get into the world, immerse myself. I want this to be something that you guys can watch and we can enjoy together as we learn about this game. There are so many other YouTubers out there that are very good at what they do and they're gonna be just bulldozing through this. So I, I would encourage you to go, you know, check that out. But I wanna give you something a little more in depth and, and introspective and um, I deliberately avoided spoilers. Um, I'm just so excited to dig into it. So, um, the night, obscure night, collapsed room and lands, sturdy owing high vitality and stout armor. Mercenary is going to give me high dexterity. Master wielding a dual scimitar sounds cool. Uh, warrior utilizes high strength. Ooh, heavy battle axe. The Herald, during to finish a quest undertaken, wields a sturdy spear. I am a big. 
Gentle Restorative Miracle. That's not bad. Common Thief, Pitiful Deserter. Wields a dagger intended for backstabs. Ooh. The Assassin. Favors sorceries in addition to thrusting swords. I've never really been one for sorceries in this game. Using high intelligence. Pyromancer. Oh, my dream life. Remote region who manipulates flame. Also an adept close combat warrior who wields a hand axe. This is the one that I have to make myself not play because I love it and I need to see the game outside of the Pyromancer point of view. Um, and it allow me to enjoy it more. Traveling cleric. High faith. Yeah. Uh, and then the depraved. No stats. Level one. No armor. Club plank shield. The real like super badass we're not gonna do that um i'm looking at i'm not i don't exactly know what vigor is um endurance vitality dexterity mainly and strength and if i remember the thief has low the assassin has 10 on a bunch a lot of attunement which i don't really like any favorite sorceries um the herald let's start off with the herald he's got the spear which i like the shield 12, 12, 11 I can bring up in faith. Let's do Harold. Now our burial gift, our starting item. We can do none. The life ring raises maximum HP. Divine blessing uh, restores HP and ailments. Hidden blessing fully restores FP. Black fire bombs. Ooh, they're good at low level. An uncouth gift for the departed. Fire gem, material used to upgrade fire weapons. More appropriately, a warrior than pretty trinkets. Sovereign the, soul, the, sovereign, the sovereignless soul of one who slept beside you. Used to acquire many souls. Uh, rusted gold coin. Increase item discovery for a short time. The usable item. Uh, cracked red eye orb. Invasion stuff. I'm, I'm contemplating playing offline. If the invasions start to get bad, I might pull it offline just because I think it interrupts from the storytelling and uh, the exploration. But I do recognize that it's a part of the game. Uh, young white branch. Be used to blend into the environment only once. Uh, one who slept beside you, I think is very interesting, and we'll talk more about that. Let's do the life ring, it's a good start. Face presets, um, I won't, I don't, if I start doing it, it's gonna be a 40 minute episode on me tweaking facial features. Let's, let's at least take a look. Uh, the oh so plain face of a commoner, the northern warrior, um, blue blood, Astora's former glory, oh. Uh, the Dragon Academy student. These are all different uh, lands that surround the Dark Souls universe. Uh, the Katarina Merrymaker, Serpentine Traveler, the Great Swamp Outcast. Look at these faces. Oh my gosh. And this is, I think, what is this? The features of the old gods zip from legend. They say children born this way are fated to be taken to the Boreal Valley. <laughs> awesome. Um... Yeah. I like the noble. You know what? I can't stop. I, I gotta keep it. Can I not, like, shave my head or appearance? Uh, the only thing I'm looking for here... Physique build detail? No. Face detail. Hair! I don't... I don't need hair color, I need this one. Where's my beard? Look at these beards. These are ridiculous. Oh, they're a little scraggly too. Um, I guess. God, he's so pale though, isn't he? I guess this is as close as I'm getting. <laughs> to looking like me. A very, <laughs> very not healthy version of myself, I suppose. Or, you know, crank. I wanna look strong. I'm gonna look ridiculous when I pan out of this. Oh my God. No, it's not okay. My apparent age is 148. Right on. Okay. Okay. What is this odd face? I can't deal with this face. But that's that's our guy. 
That's our hero right there. Awesome. And off we go. Well, it's immediately clear to me that they took their successful uh, Bloodborne ideas and mashed it together. Oh, that's me. Rising from the grave. Something is threatening the fire. I need to go do it. Here we are, Cemetery of Ash. This is me, Bia Bia! Okay, so, let's get some basics out of the way. Control camera, right on. Regular attack, yes. Strong attack, yes. Lock target and release. Oh, and of course I miss. And that's a critical strike. Hopefully you're going to be seeing a lot of those. Backstep and roll. Uh, let's get familiar with our interface here. Equipment, status, messages, system. And then my... What I can use. Cool. Uh, what's the best way to do this? Yeah. The Estus Flask, if you're just starting or you don't know. This is your main uh, healing item. Looks like I start out with three charges. Um, the undead treasure, these dull green flasks. Fill with essence at bonfires, drink to restore HP. The journey of an undead has always traced the bonfires, and no journey of import has been made without an Estus flask. Uh, dark sign, lose souls and return to bonfire. Dark sign is the sign of an accursed undead. Returns its spare to the last bonfire rested at, or the bonfire at Firelink Shrine, but at the cost of all souls' hell. Carriers of the dark sign are reborn after death and eventually lose their minds, turning hollow. Uh, and so it is they are driven from their homelands. Um, it's important that being undead and being hollow are different fundamentally. Everybody in this universe is undead to an extent. The hollow are the ones that go crazy and are, have lost their minds. Um, the separation crystal uh, sends phantoms back to their homes or you back to yours. So if somebody comes over to help me or I get pulled into somebody else's game and it's not working out. Uh, Wave the white circlet. It's an online play item. Restore connection to other worlds. Engage in unjust deeds when contact with other worlds will lose their connection to them. Assume such sin is their own, but are found few and far between. Okay, so it's sort of like an anti-PVP thing. No materials, no keys. I have a uh, heal aid, slightly restore HP. Miracle imparted as charity to those of little faith. A show of tolerance from the Way of White. Okay, thank you, Way of White. Spears. Oh, spears are fantastic. Sent around thrusting, yes. Um, high damage when timed at the end of an enemy swing. Shield splitter. Take a large step forward and make a single focus thrust puncture enemy shields and inflict damage. That must be the special heavy attack. Uh, my talisman. For casting miracles of the gods, once a very common item among the ranks of the old way of white. Equip talisman. Yes, yes, yes. Temporarily increase poise while casting... Miracles for enemy attachment rewards while they're in the hand. So it seems like even the secondary items have like special skills, and maybe those skills are randomized. Orthodox metal shield. She doesn't really have average shields, practical balancing damage. I know that there's a lot to go over right off the bat, but we have a lot to establish, and I don't want to risk missing out on something that we could have known from the start. A lot of this, if you played the Dark Souls games, is going to be familiar to you. Um, but it never hurts to go over it for everybody, so we're all on the same page. Steel Helm, Heralds of the Way of White, deliver commandments. Found lacking blunt strikes and damage. So it looks like I am a Way of White. Heralds of the Way of White, Steel Armor. Should be the same thing. Yep. Quilted Trousers. My Life Ring, Generations Old, Small Jewel. And then uh, Covenant stuff. Right on. Right on. And everything's already equipped. We don't have to worry about it. It's good to look at um, shields. Always physical, 100%. It means whenever I put it up to block, it's going to eat all of the damage and not just some of it, um, which you'll see later on. But let's mess around. Pillage Corpse. 
Fading soul, right on. Move and dash. What is this over here? Soul of a deserted, deserted corpse. Wow, I can't even talk. Um, God. The textures look amazing. And I hope that that holds up. One thing that Dark Souls is pretty famous for is that... Oh, it's not going to do it. <laughs> One thing that Dark Souls is pretty famous for is that in certain areas, their frame rates chunk. An Ash and Estus flask. This res restores FP. Okay, so that's the FP. Quite befitting of an unkindled and Ash and Estus flask turns a bonfire's heat cold. Okay. Right on. I think that's for my miracles. Oh, I gotta, uh, I gotta equip my. Um, where is this already equipped? Oh, in my other hand. Okay. Guard, and this is like the newbie zone area. Generally, there's not too much. Gives you a chance to wander around, learn stuff. Parry and repost. I'm not super good at parrying and reposting. Oh, never mind. On the first try, I will take it, and that'll be the one that I get in this game. I am positive. Uh, I usually try to circle around and backstab him. Uh, but I'll try a couple couple parries. Ooh. Hello there, sir. That's what I'm used to. Um, there's a big damage differential. If you can parry and repost, you do a ton of damage. But you also risk taking a lot of damage, too. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, one big thing, if you're not familiar with it, uh, all weapons have the weak attack. But what's nice about um, spears is that I can still attack while I'm shielding. Uh, it drains a lot of stamina, and then you have to build around it. You have to work around it. Use right weapon skills. Right on. What's my what's my right weapon skill? Woof. Wah! Oh, so good. Another fading soul. Very cool. It's over here. Turn back. Um, oh, and a blood stain. So you know whatever is over here is is super great. Uh, let's see what this blood stain shows. Bloodstains in the Souls game, when somebody else dies, like this fellow did, when someone dies, um, there's a chance that their bloodstain actually shows up in your game, and you can actually watch and see how they died. And it's it's a very interesting... Wow, look at all the bloodstains. Okay, I'm not going that way yet. I feel like I shouldn't. Um, it's an interesting way to learn sort of what to be careful for, what other players are tripping up on. Um, it's a very collaborative experience. And Dark Souls has always done a good job of being very player collaborative without, you know, hanging out and, hey guys, let's get together and do this stuff. Change weapons, right on. I can do my minor heal. Takes a little bit of stamina, takes a little bit of uh, FP. Oh man, look at that. I have it running right now on max settings on my PC, and it seems to be running pretty good. Hopefully it looks good in the recording as well. Uh, ooh, and this is our first bonfire. Wow. Look at all this stuff that we can see. So we gotta go down around that way, up into that tower. Oh, that's the tower from the uh, intro cinematic. There's a bell at the top of that tower. Um. I gotta stop saying, um, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. So let's talk about bonfires real quick. I learned something. Bonfires uh, are sort of like your checkpoints in the game. Whenever you kill an enemy in Dark Souls, if you don't know this already, whenever you kill an enemy in Dark Souls, they don't regenerate on their own. Um, once you kill it, it's dead. And for some bigger enemies, they stay dead permanently. But whenever you rest at a bonfire... Enjoy that. Whenever you rest at a bonfire, all enemies are brought back to life. 
So it becomes a choice of how far in are you, how long can you go, or should you double back around and... Something is behind me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, I shouldn't go off the cliff there. Um, of course, when you die, you respawn at the last bonfire you were at. Ooh, something down here. Um, and you also use them to level up as you gain souls. Oh, hi guys. As you gain souls, you use them for a bunch of things, but you use them to level up and you have to rest to do that. So leveling up means all the enemies come back. Um, it's a, it's a, it's an honest trade-off and it's really cool. Can I kick him off? Oh, oh, I'm getting stabbed. Go off. Oh, well. Oh, no! <laughs> this guy. Cleric Sacred Chime. Oh, and some fire bombs. Fantastic. I want to do... Let's get used to this real quick. Uh, switch. What I see for the fire bombs. And the sacred chime, I think, should be a talisman. Cleric sacred chime. Spell buff. FP cost. Okay, so. Oh, there's a lot here. Don't know what that stuff is. Gentle prayer. Uh. Attribute bonuses is what it scales with, so the more faith I have, for instance, the more, I guess, damage it does. I need 3 strength and 14 faith, and I only have 13, so if this is a thing I want to use, I have to gear towards it. Let's see. Sacred time for casting miracles of the gods. Clerics who become undead, equip a talisman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentle prayer. Recovers HP for a period of time, albeit extremely slowly. Works while equipped in either hand. Extra life gain. Always a plus. And I'm trying my best not to use my flasks because I know how tricky that they are. Let's uh, let's see how much this really heals for. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. This guy's dead. Did we check everything up here? The real joy in this game? Oh, I have to press the button while dashing to jump. What is that? Is that... Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that was an enemy for a second. Let's try it. Huh! Nice jump. Titanite eye charts. The real joy in this game is found in the exploration. There's something very exciting about speedruns, plunging attack. Oh, hey, bud. And there's something exciting about, like, you know, OP powering through it. But some of my best experiences in any of the Dark Souls games has just been wandering, and especially because I have avoided spoilers as much as possible, this game is going to be loaded with stuff. Ooh. That looks like a big bad guy. That's a thing. God, look at this. These environments are just beautiful. I'm guessing that I can't go through this. Yep. That means I gotta deal with this guy. Well, I am super sure that he is absolutely friendly. And he's gonna thank me for removing this bonfire sword from him. Ugh. Hello, friend. Can we be friends? Oh, I can target you. We're probably not gonna be friends. Edex Gunder. Whoa. Okay. Boss fights 101. A lot of bosses have really big attacks. And so the key to the games is not to overextend yourself. Oof. Try to stay behind a boss. Most bosses have uh, sort of vulnerability windows behind them. You just have to sort of be patient and time what you're doing. Oh, that looks bad. Oh, wow. What is that? Oh, wow. Get the hell out of there. Holy shit. Let's just talk about this. Okay. 
He's still just a dude with little legs. He's still just a guy. No, that seems bad. Stay up close. Don't panic. The worst thing you can do in this game is panic. Oh, he still gets knocked over like a bitch, doesn't he? Come on. Come on. No, no, no. And don't get greedy. Because these bosses are designed... Oh, <laughs> these bosses are designed to... I'm sorry, I, I just realized I was yelling. I'm looking at my uh, sound. Oh my god. Ember restored. Cool. I'm partially on fire. That's amazing. Oh uh, gosh. Oh, and a fresh bonfire. Uh, bosses in this game are designed to take advantage of a player panicking. The best thing you can do is analyze a boss, try a couple tried and true methods, and just sort of adapt as things happen. Um, and that boss was a, the first boss for like, what, 20 minutes into the game. So he wasn't super hard, but that was so cool. Did you see that thing? And he gave me something too. He gave me a sword? What? What, what was that? Let's find out. It's a key. Thrust in shrine bonfire to activate warp. Sword missing from the shrine bonfire. Um, this sword is only bequeathed to chosen Ash as judged by Udex, who awaits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. Okay. Um, the reason why we're checking all of this stuff is because a lot, well, all of the story is nestled into items. Um... I'm, I'm just blanking out. So I can't level up yet. And I don't know why. Uh, but it's probably just a little bit further on. So I tell you what. We made it to this bonfire. It looks like we're sitting in right about 30 minutes. So let's call this for our first episode. I hope this gave you a good idea for the rhythm I'm going to try to go for. Um, what I'm going to try to do. I... Hope that you guys enjoyed it and you enjoy hearing me talk a lot and be excited like a little fanboy. I've been waiting for this for so long. Um, I'm going to try to finish up my Dragon's Dogma stuff. Only got a couple of those episodes left. Uh, and a lot more of this coming, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you did like it, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And get out and watch all the different YouTubers out there that are playing this game. Because they're going to come at it in all different ways. Um, much different than my little pokey poke approach, too. So, from Digital Flash Fire, I am Rolling Thunder. Uh, I'll see you guys next episode.